So Dave, do we expect Lake Mead's water level to hit an elevation of eight, 895 feet or what we call Deadpool? And if so, what does that mean for the Colorado River Compact and Southern Nevada, as well as Arizona and California? Sure, there are very plausible scenarios where Lake Mead's elevation could go all the way down to Deadpool to 895, as you mentioned. And what that basically means is that is the point at which the lake level is would no longer allow uh, water to be able to flow through Hoover Dam and down to um, Arizona, California, and our obligations for the country of Mexico. And so, um, we have spent quite a bit of time and energy as an organization over the last decade plus in preparing for that with infrastructure. So we are in by far and away the best shape on the whole Colorado River associated with access to our resource and uh, um, candidly puts us in a, in a much better position than the other lower basin states. I, I'm really not even sure what to say from a legal perspective. <laughs> Once we get to the point of Deadpool, Right, where water can't go through the dam. Uh, we've got, what is it, 96.4% of the, of the allocation of the lower basin not getting to where it needs to go. So the uh, notion that uh, we'll end up at Deadpool is hard to imagine. Uh, fortunately, these folks did imagine it um, 15 years ago. Uh, but as we as we approach those kinds of levels, we would fully expect the Secretary of the Interior uh, and maybe even the Secretary of State under the treaty to uh, take actions uh, unilaterally with respect to those types of levels that would uh, cause uh, at least some amount of water to get through. So uh, it's, those are scenarios that are frankly difficult from a legal perspective to, to, to imagine because of everybody, everybody on the river has their, their special law, right? This, this is my particular piece of the law of the river and I think that's the most important piece. Uh, it, it generally goes down a priority system where you know it's treaty, it's compact, it's statute, uh, and everybody's got their, their reason that they should be getting a piece of that water coming through the dam. It's gonna be very difficult uh, to manage the system if we get to that kind of level, but it'll have to be done. And as Greg describes, I mean, the way the the law of the river evolved over time, because most people point back to the 22 compact and, and say that's the law of the river, but just about every decade, you know, a, a new treaty, a new statute, uh, you know, has been added to it, a new set of agreements. and. Greg also alluded to the fact that California, at least vis-a-vis -vis California and, and Arizona, has a senior priority. Uh, but at some point, uh, the law of nature trumps the law of man. You know, so I think that's what you know our, our legal counselors have, have struggled a little bit to even describe, because the nature of this would be so unprecedented as to, you know, what steps the federal government may be required to unilaterally take. Um, nobody knows exactly how those legalities are, are going to sort out. Uh, but what's important for our community to always focus on is, as Dave discussed, we have far and away the most secure means of delivery of this precious resource of anybody on the river. Uh, and as long as we continue to take care of our demand management, which I know we'll talk about here in a little bit, our community uh, is still safe, we're secure, uh, we control our own destiny.